Hey everyone, today I want to talk about the Luna synth from Pink Noise Studio. Um, it's based off the Mini Moog Voyager, as you can see on the back here. And as I'm making this video, um, there's actually a challenge, a synth challenge or competition going on over at ReasonTalk.com. So I will put a link to that down in the description um, while it's still going on. And then once it's over, I will um, link the winners as well. Uh, I'm going to do a written review of this too. Um, it's just a really feature packed uh, synth and I wanted to give a, a pretty brief overview of all the features in video. Um, so this is a synth that's based off of 92 sample sets, multi sample sets, and you can find them in this parameter right here. And we have bass, key, lead, oscillator, pad, and special effects. So 92 of those total. And we get two engines here, A and B. And you can see when I switch, um, the color flips there. So you can have both of them on. You can turn this one off, of course. Um, well, you can actually turn both of them off and just nothing will play. Um, and then this is what the default patch sounds like. So it's just a nice oscillator um, with pulse width modulation. So just from these sounds, you can get a huge variety. Um, there's lots of different cool stuff in here. And you can also check out my video where I run through um, the different presets um, and demo a lot of the sounds that come in this. And of course you can mix them. And then you also have a fade uh, balance knob here. This uses um, an equal power crossfade to switch between the two. So this is 100% on A and then 100% on B, which is nothing right now. Turn that back on. So each of these engines has its own set of parameters. This section here where the color changes are all independent. Um, and before I get into the individual parameters, I do want to mention um, in an update, um, the developer included a link feature, which is really cool. Um, it acts like you expect it would when you have it on. You see that it's enabled. It, it, the LED here is on on both A and B, and if I make a change, it will make that same change on the other. And then if I um, deactivate it, this stays the same, and then this um, goes back down. So really helpful feature, um, in especially for stuff like the amp envelope where you'd want it to um, usually react the same once a key is pressed down. Um, I mean, but it's not necessary. You can still do them independently um, for each of these features, the filter, the amp envelope, the mod envelope, and the send effects. So in each of these engines, um, we have a bunch of different sections here, all pretty standard synth stuff. We have the oscillator section. First, we have the volume pretty self-explanatory. Um, we have octave, semitone, and fine, a pan knob, a amp velocity, um, so that it reacts depending on how, how uh, hard you hit your keys. Sample start. So if I wanted to kind of um, move the sample start of one of these um, sample sets um, forward, I could use this up to 100%. Here, let me... Some of them react more to this than others if I were to do something that, that changes over time like that. You can hear how it is reacting differently. Um, we have a trigger delay, which is 
in um, time divisions here, which basically after the synth receives the MIDI note, it will take this amount of time to actually play. So using the two different engines here, you can make some really cool kind of um, almost um, like arpeggiated or rhythmic sounds here. So if I were to make the trigger delay on the 16th note here, and obviously you can fine tune this, but um, this is this engine is triggering a sixteenth note after the note is received. So then we have the filter, um, and we have uh, the standard filter types here: low pass twenty four, um, eighteen, twelve, and six. A band pass and a high pass all sound really good. So lots of different cool things you can do with that. Um, cutoff filter, pretty self-explanatory. One thing I really, really like about this synth is that um, all of the parameters are labeled with the relevant values. Um, in a lot of cases, um, that's not the case. Um, so on the cutoff, you do get the actual frequency that the cutoff is at. Um, so we have cutoff, resonance, pretty standard we have uh, filter velocity so the harder you hit the key um, the more this will react as this is turned up we have keyboard tracking um, so depending on what note is played um, the cutoff frequency frequency will move along with that and one interesting thing is that this uh, actually goes up to 200 percent so um, you can make it track even more than just one-to-one. -one. Uh, and then we have mod envelope, which is found over here. This is saying how much of this mod uh, uh, envelope will be applied to the filter. Um, we have standard amp envelope uh, with your ADSR. Uh, again, we have these values here. So this is in milliseconds, seconds, and milliseconds, um, dB and milliseconds again. And one cool thing about um, both the amp and mod envelopes is that you have a curve A and curve D. Um, so what that means is how um, the onset of the attack and decay um, react depending on where this knob is. So if I just in the default setting here and then with a bit of um, attack added here that's what it sounds like so if I turn it to the left the negative here how it's more of a quick onset um, if I compare that to the right So one really cool thing you get on the amp and mod envelopes is um, this curve A and curve D. So basically what these are, uh, um, they determine how the onset of the attack and decay envelopes will um, affect the sound. So if I change it to the um, right here, with just a little bit of attack added, you'll hear kind of a quicker onset to the sound. Let me up it just a little bit. Compared to, let me do it a little more. So that's a pretty quick onset compared to if I move it to the about, about the same place on the left. Hear how it's kind of ramping up. So um, when it's less than zero, it's more of kind of an exponential shape whereas more than zero, it is going to be um, more of a logarithmic shape. So that's just an, an extra little um, way of um, tweaking your amp envelope and mod envelope here, um, which also, of course, has the same ADSR. We also have two LFOs, and we get the sine, triangle, square, saw, random, random, and saw, 
and um, again, kind of a logarithmic shape there as well. So these are independent, so I can, you know, do whatever. And then if I switch over to B, these are different as well. So rate goes all the way down to 0 0.01 hertz and then up to 100 hertz, or it can be synced to the tempo. And then we also have a retrig. So whenever a key is pressed, the LFO will start over. Um, and I'll come back to the modulations after the effects here. So we have four insert effects, equalizer, distortion, phaser, and chorus. All very cool. Um, they, the only thing about these is that they can't be reordered, um, but they are in the order that I would almost always put them in anyway, so it hasn't been an issue for me. And you can turn them on and off by using this bar down here. So the yellow, of course, means that it's on. So we have four um, bands here on this equalizer, um, a low filter, a low mid, high mids and high, and an output. Um, in case you're boosting or cutting and you want to match the output to the input. So one cool thing about this, especially uh, it's on these um, middle ones, is that they, they both can go, the frequency range goes from 40 hertz to 16 kilohertz. The low goes from 50 to 800, and the high goes from 1K to 16K as well. Um, and of course, on your mid bands, you get the Q, which is in octaves, which is pretty helpful. Gain, so pretty standard. So you can shape the sound just by using that. Um, distortion, we have a transistor and tube. Let me... And I don't want to blow your ears up. So I'm kind of pushing it kind of hard there. So you can get some pretty cool effects that way. Um, with the drive, let me switch it over to um, the tube. So then we have rectify. And of course I'm pushing it to the extreme here. Um, maybe you'd wanna do that, but uh, definitely not necessary. Turn the drive down. You have separate uh, independent wet dry knobs here, so I could mix back in the dry signal for um, sort of a, a really flexible um, parallel processing. And then of course you have a low cut and a high cut. Phaser, you have all the standard stuff, um, rate, depth, and feedback. Um, you do get an invert. Um, switch here, which is cool. Number of poles from two to eight. Spread. Center frequency. And mix. So lots of fun stuff you can do with that. And then chorus, you get your rate up to 10 hertz, down to 0.1 hertz, depth in milliseconds, and delay in milliseconds. We also have a square and sign shape, number of voices up to four, and of course down to one and then your mix knob.
You get some really crazy stuff on that too. Send effects. Um, send out um, the signal to a delay and reverb parameter, um, which I'll talk about more down here in the global section. Um, but first we'll do the modulations. So you do have six different modulation slots. Um, you have your sources, um, performance sources, two LFOs, the IMP uh, and mod envelopes, random bipolar and random unipolar, and your pitch bend CV in and CV, uh, CV in one and CV in two. Um, you have destinations, all the standard stuff, um, everything on the envelopes here, the LFO amounts and rates, filter cutoff, filter resonance, sample start pitch, pan, and volume. So you can do lots of cool stuff with that. Amount, of course, is 100 to negative 100%. And then you have um, this global section down here, and these are um, this whole bottom section is universal um, for the whole for both the engines here. So, like I said, the the delay and reverb are controlled. Um, the amounts are controlled by using these send effects here or send uh, amounts. The delay can be synced or not synced. Uh, you have a ping pong. You have your time, of course. Damp frequency and feedback amount. For the reverb, um, we have a bunch of different um, convolutions here, and we also get a pre delay amount and a decay amount. If you turn this off, it's um, more of a standard. You get your time, pre delay, high damp, and low damp. You also get a compressor which has all the standard threshold attack release ratio up to 20 and it can do one to one and then makeup gain. Only thing I wish on this compressor is that it actually showed how much gain reduction was happening. Um, but you can also just turn it on and off and level match that way or use a, um, a leveling um, plugin or extension or something like that master volume, and then you have a safe limiter to make sure that you're not clipping um, on the output, no matter if you like are hitting your distortion really hard or something like that. And then you have your performance section, which is standard um, pitch and mod. You also get an aftertouch, which is really cool and um, comes from um, the original unit. So I have that mapped to one of the pads, which is also mapped to a note. Uh, I'm still working on that. So just another um, parameter to give you some um, flexibility there. Uh, pitch bend amount from zero to 12, a full octave, semitones, um, and poly mono, standard stuff. We have our glide, and this is a pretty cool glide. Um, just sounds really nice. And then auto, which um, on most synths, if it if the notes overlap with each other, it'll do the glide. If not, it will be normal. So then you have this key split, which basically splits the two engines um, at, at um, middle C. So let me turn that one back on. So. So they're totally independent, and of course you can edit both of these. So you can maybe do like a bass patch down here and um, maybe more of a lead patch up here using individual engines, and then you only need to use one synth. So that's kind of cool. Let me change that back. Uh, and then last thing is on the back here, we have um, control, uh, gate, and CV inputs, we have the aforementioned CV in one and two. We have um, filter A and filter B, this amount and CV input. Um, we have a polyphony knob from two to 64. 
And we also have a quality, which is default on high here, I believe. High, medium, and uh, economical. Um, so overall, I mean, that is a pretty brief overview of what this synth, um, the features that are included. Another thing I'll mention is that the developer has been extremely on top of um, responding to people who with uh, feedback, comments. Um, there have been a, f a few small bugs that have been um, reported and he has managed to squash them and get an update out very, very quickly and is very responsive. So definitely a plus. I think he's going to keep up with, um, keep, you know, keep adding to this synth and um, take what he's learned and go to new projects with it as well. Um, and also that the manual is really good. It has a lot of information that I didn't touch on here, um, but it basically has everything that you need to know about this synth. A lot of work went into it. There was a lot of detail. So definitely check that out and check out Luna in general because I think you'll really enjoy it. And like I said, go ahead and enter the competition. It's slated to end on April 2nd and I hope you join us. So I'll uh, talk to you guys later. Thanks and peace.